Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4, where we are going to continue the game as Betsy Misaraka. I think that's the best I've ever said it. Yes, good start. So, the end of the stream yesterday, I've got to say, I was not feeling well at the end of that stream. I basically just crashed, and I crashed hard after we finished. So, I've actually gone back even further than the previous save. This is now a year and a half before, because... Now, thinking back, I have no idea what was happening. Like, I was not in a good way. Um, but all back now, all good to go. We are still dealing with rebels. We know that we need to consolidate our forces because those rebels are going to get big. I think it's also going to be worth spending a bit of power just to knock these guys back a bit. Harsh treatment, 51. That's probably the best 51 military points I've ever spent. And we are also just going to go ahead and consolidate these forces so that we can conserve some of that manpower. And then we'll just go up to our uh, combat strength. I think I might actually go ahead and hire another 3,000 of those. We'll take a loan because we kind of have to pay this stuff off afterwards. But we want to actually have a nation to do that with. I think we'll get one more. And then after that it's going to be mercenary. I'm going to take one more loan. Because we do need to uh, make sure that we can fight these off. Something like that. That should do. And let's stay here because I want to go and attack the forces going for the capital. Although they do have reinforcements coming in. So that is a concern. If we take a quick look at this, we... <laughs> I'm still a little bit surprised that we broke the country when it did. Because I don't remember that bar being very full. And it's still not. So we have a bit of time. Glad you're feeling better. You were obviously on autopilot last night. Yeah, I don't know why it was so bad. Like, I, I've not felt that way before. It was pretty terrible. I had a massive splitting headache afterwards. It was probably, like, stress-induced or something. And I was shaking like a complete crazy person. Like, I was like... Afterwards. Wasn't good. Was not good. And you're actually coming for me. This is the hills. You have a river crossing to get to us. So this is actually probably going to be one of the best opportunities we have of fighting the 14,000. We still have to deal with the 20,000, but I need to be rather more careful in exactly how we decide to pursue that. Okay, so the first Separatists we're going to fight off no problem. That's excellent. And then you'll join in here. And I'm just going to let us reinforce to full strength. This is okay. You are marching further south. So I'm actually going to split us in half and we'll just start taking some of this land back. Breaking the country, don't forget that if the rebels control more than 50% of the provinces by number, they can break the country in uh, regardless of thingy. Yeah, I know. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they didn't, because I just started taking territory back. But I... I don't know. We should be okay. We, we, we can control everything now. And there's still a province away, so we'll have time to react. Uh, no, let's stay here. So we have 20,000, they have 21. If I can get them to attack me, then that would be awesome. And with this, we're taking control of the rest of the land. We still have more rebels, though only from one province, in like a year. Foreign plots. Seize them and take their wealth. That's going to be good for paying off uh, issues. Also, I don't want to spend stability. I cannot afford to spend stability move you down here, so you are now in a danger zone. Uh, I would, actually, you could attack me in either of these provinces. I could even attack you, because there's no rivers to cross. Um, let's move to Bara, and then I think I might go and attack you. Or you can come for me. Even better. Let's merge you together. Let's make sure you're consolidated. You are. So this is going to be the big showdown. These are separatists, so they are going to have better combat ability than peasants. Unfortunately, and there are a lot of them. They do outnumber me by a thousand, but we do have a full force here. And they have a lot of cavalry. That's probably one of the reasons they hit so hard. Two artillery, but this is still far too early for artillery to be an effective field unit. Um, actually, you know, the other thing I was doing yesterday was just playing too fast. Uh, during all the problems. So we seem to be defeating them okay, which is a little bit of a surprise. Discipline's the same, morale's the same, tactics are the same. We just have the extra territory. And also we have a better general. 
Trash person is pretty good at shock, and this is still very much a shock game. Okay, so we defeated their army. Let's split you in half. Let's send you this way. And we have you who are going to rise up. And then after that, and there they are. You... Yeah, okay. That's fine. I think we already have separatists here. And it's only 8,000 men, so we should be alright. This was so easy to see off. I, I don't know why I was struggling and flailing so much yesterday. Uh, war exhaustion is almost to the point where I can go ahead and start actually coring all of that stuff. Alright, let's head down here. Actually, no, that's a river crossing. We'll go this way. Hopefully there's no river crossing across here. Uh, there might be. It tends to be if you actually cross a river crossing when you're moving between. I know there is a way of seeing. River flows between us and Anamuro, unfortunately. So there will be. And we're out of manpower, so it was a good thing that we got some mercenaries. And here it is, the last battle. We are on a minus one, but they have far fewer troops than us this time. Cavalry is nicely on the flank, chipping away. My center is taking a bit of damage, but we should be fine. And there it is. Okay, let's take the mercenaries and just go ahead and disband those, because we're not going to need them. And I'm just going to go and shift consolidate everyone else. So we do have some more rebels coming in 41 years. I think we're okay for a while. And because of all the rebels just spawned, um, we're going to have a bunch of unrest reduction. Which we could actually use to reduce autonomy everywhere. That's actually really tempting to do. And this will actually allow me to recover the economy far more quickly than we otherwise could have. Okay, good. Let's send you back into the center. This rebel is going to rise up quicker because we did just spawn those rebels. And we can start paying off loans. We are still making money. Let's get out. Let's get ourselves out of this black hole. Anyway, Betis Maraca is now completely under our control. Which is excellent because now people have to land to do any damage and also Zanzibar. But so long as I maintain my eight heavy ships, we have definitely got naval superiority over everyone in our area. In fact, we have the one, two, three, four, fifth largest number of heavies. The top has actually got four, but the way I'm reading this is this is four heavy ships that we don't have yet. Maybe three. I mean, we do only have... Actually, we have less ship capture. We only have 33%. Because we don't have the Doctrine yet, do we? Oh, we do have the Doctrine. Okay, we have 66% chance of capturing ships already. So, yay. And then we also need to decide what we want to do after this. So I would like to do a couple of wars against Matapa, I think. Once we have caught up in military. So one of the main things is going to be technology. We might need to look around to see if there is a place where we can secure a technology from. The other thing we could do is attack Matapa in order to split nations out of them. Which will then be friendly to us. Like we could revive Kilwa. Because the best thing for us at the moment is to have chaos over here. Because if they're not unified, then they're not a threat. However, if they are unified, then it's easier to pirate. But I don't want to pirate the home node. We found already that that's actually a pretty bad idea. Uh, the other thing that we probably want to do is try and save up enough money where we can upgrade these two provinces. And in fact, I probably want to start thinking about states as well. Uh, so how is technology going? Let's remind ourselves. So Ajuran has got it already. Uh, Partey is getting it, and Partey will spread it to Mombasa, which I'm hopeful... Yeah, we'll be able to make them friendly enough. Actually, exactly. And we may be able to raid coasts again soon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can. Well, let's go ahead and do that, because that's going to earn us a nice amount of money. And this colony is established. We have a free colonist that we could also be using. It's kind of unfortunate that this doesn't actually reach further north, so maybe we do need to take the Maldives. You're allied to Pasai, but so long as I can keep Pasai out of this navally, 
Then taking the Maldives would be great because it would mean that technology could technically spread from Vijinaga. Although, again, we would need to not push Vijinaga off. Mara Island for Tekken loot. Yeah, difficulty there is it would have to be an OCB because I have no, no way of fabricating on it. Sorry, no way of getting a claim on it. I think that going for the Maldives is going to be the next best option. That's also going to allow me to pillage India. Should I wish to do so. No CB, best CB. Yeah, I've never really embraced that theory. The other thing I would like to do is grab some of the islands over here. Maybe the Andamans, which would allow me access to Bengal and all of this. And then perhaps like this island to allow me access to Indonesia. So actually I'm just going to go ahead and send a diplomat to the Andamans right now because that is going to be a great pirate location. And I think I might also start fabricating on Vijinaga. Sorry, on uh, Maldives. Once they've got home. Okay, let's bring you over here and start raiding this coast. Now, I do wish that there was a way of avoiding raiding Mombasa, but I don't think there's going to be a way of doing that. Oh, I could raid Maran as well. And Mara, for that matter. Yeah, this is definitely going to help me paying off loans. Expansion plus something else lets you take provinces you border. Expansion on its own would, because those are all in trade company regions. Well, actually, uh, Mara isn't. Aiden is one of the places that is not in a trade company. In the east. Many jobs of a soldier. I would like to spend professionalism. I don't want to, but I will spend professionalism. And then bartering increases. This is actually really expensive, so I'm going to take the autonomy. I'm not currently working on getting government reforms. I mean, I'm getting government reforms, but it's not our priority. We are already the Pirate Republic, so we don't need to be so focused about that, which does mean that we can A, increase autonomy if we need to, and B, we can take estates which is something I have been neglecting until now, and I'm aware of this fact. And let's also go here, pay off a couple more of those loans. We're actually paying those off really quickly. Marvelous. Not as much as I would have liked. And then we can send you back to Privateer Coromandel. Oh, you mean auto-explore? Uh, yes, but I think that's only on land. I'm going primarily for islands, so it's less of a concern. Besides, I have another way of getting all the maps for the exploration. I just steal them. <laughs> I'm a pirate. I don't make maps. I steal them. Uh, War exhaustion is still ticking down. I do want to wait until that's done. And I think I might set you to drill until those rebels become more of a threat. So we can build up our professionalism over time. And I'm pretty happy to be paying for the army at the moment. We've really dropped the interest payments. Trade's making us actually a pretty penny. We're about to make some more from Spoils of War. That's actually a lot less than I expected. And we are about to start working on the Maldives. What's their technology, Miltech? 13. I'm like nine. 82% again. And Zanzibar really is the only way that I'm going to get technology. I would love to be able to colonize the Mozambique Islands and get them that way, but I'd actually kind of prefer that to be owned by Europeans. Speaking of Europeans, hello Portugal. Trade is flowing through here. Nothing yet. Well, virtually nothing. This is going to be amazing to privateer later on. Looks like Portugal is in the Cape 30 technology. But again, the problem is I need adjacency. So I could start a colony on the Cape. That's true. I just need to not have it be a colonial nation. In which case, I would actually really like to have taken this. Would I? 
No, because that would mean I'd have a lot of control trade over here. And I'd actually just... I want them to have as much control over the Cape so I can just pirate it. I might even sell them the province afterwards once I have a couple more strong pirate ha havens. C crew blacklisted. The crew of the Betsaboka are a menace. Though they have excellent record of delivering prizes, as soon as they make ports, their drunkenness and violence cause so much damage and disruption in Vanto Mandri that some wonder if they're worth the trouble they cause. After a particularly destructive e episode, the local smuggling consortium decided to blacklist the entire crew, making them unable to sell their plunder anywhere in Betis Maraca. This has caused upset amongst the pirates that call the island home. They believe their natural rights to live as they please are being violated, and several rabble-rousers compare the smugglers to snobbish aristocrats. Uh, you know what, if we're going to be playing a little bit like Libertaria, which we should be, seeing as we're Madagascar, um, we should absolutely lift the, ba the ban. The ban. The ban's illegal. Absolute liberty. Anarchist state. No rulers. I'm going to struggle to uphold that. Um... Can I do this yet? I think we are close enough... No, War Exhaustion is still increasing the cost by 2.6, and we also have Corruption, which I could start spending a little bit to begin removing. Let's do that. And we're also paying for the Andaman Colony. But I think that's fine. Um, so one of the reasons I was spying on Pasai was so I could steal their maps, and I still should. As much as I want to go after Matapa... I do not have the means to do so right now. Although their Miltech is only two levels ahead of mine, but I need Matapa to fight somebody else. Sure, I can blockade them into oblivion, but I need somebody to actually hit them. They have a larger army than me, and they have manpower. Hey, Donna. I think the timer for reduced autonomy is longer than the timer for recent rebellions. He might have unrest in five years' t time when the recent revolt timer ends. True, but I also have... I mean, the reason I have all the unrest at the moment is because of separatism. So that's going to have ticked down an awful lot. And also war exhaustion over extension. Both of those will have gone as well. So my general unrest is actually going to be pretty decent. Plus, when this ruler is replaced, and remember I'm a... Uh, Republic, so I can replace rulers very quickly. I can take one of the cults, which reduces unrest further. So I'm not anticipating that being a huge problem going forwards, because usually we're pretty damn stable. They just happened to catch us when three quarters of the island was recently conquered. How many ships do you have? You have seven light ships, which I would very much like to press into service. I wonder, can I do a... Um Trade conflict. I could. Do that. I'm curious to see what exactly this means. So the uh, <laughs> victory condition is to blockade them. Wellata would not accept. Chokwe would. But I'm going to be building up war score just blockading them. You know what? I might do a con trade conflict. Because you can demand money and stuff like that, can't you? Can't do cause, can't do liberation. Yeah, you can demand money and you can humiliate them. I might actually do a trade conflict. Trade conflict. <laughs> You're not paying enough protection money. That kind of trade conflict. Could maybe use Azuran against Mutapa. Not anymore. We kind of tried to do that previously and Azuran got absolutely annihilated. They're more there as a um, a block against Matapa in case Matapa decides to come for me. Although, actually, they're a bit of a liability now. For the same reasons I just mentioned. I can hold out indefinitely. They can't. Okay, let's go and core all the stuff. I'm ex surprised that those are so expensive, but so it goes. Also, how much of this can I store up on 1800? Flipping hell, 1800. <laughs> kind of shows you just how bad the technology situation is. And when's the truce end? 
Uh, 92. Oh, we've still got nine years. Long truce. Is that another loan to pay off? No, not quite. Election. Right, so we want to elect somebody else because we are still trying to beef up our Republican tradition. And I'm going to go for military this time. An experienced and dreaded captain. Which is also going to start giving points to the captains. Which are morale of navies, naval leader fire, and also stab cost becomes even more expensive. And then also the cults. Um, tolerance of true faith. Domestic trade power. We're going to go for the domestic trade power so that we can hasten the recovery. And also, are there conversions I need to do? There are, but I'm quarrying at the moment. Those are forgotten. Dead and forgotten. Once we worshipped those who came before us, but now we've chosen a new path. While the great tombs we built in our ancestors' honour still remain, they no longer hold the same importance for our people. Their keepers have left to fulfil other duties, and one day nothing shall remain but bones and ruins. Now our ancestors' final rest begins. Because we've chosen a different cult for the nation, the ancestral lands of Maros and etc. have lost their importance, and we've lost the ancestral tomb, which was giving us extra Republican tradition. Yes, we are pirates. As you can see from the government reforms. Pirate Republic. And I think I have found my favourite government form. <laughs> they are a lot of fun to play with. And as much as I really want to do a commentary in the next multiplayer, I also kind of want to play as a pirate because I suspect that the amount of manipulation you could do as a pirate nation would be really quite astonishing. They do take a while to set up. And they do definitely have their weaknesses, but all of their strengths are my strengths. So I think that they would play really well in my playstyle. <laughs> the citizens have grown tired of the local influence of the greedy Azuran merchants they claim are using unfair advantages. So this is in Marison Sinalabada. Place beginning with an M that one which produces slaves it does have a bit of trade outcome output has a bit of trade power as well but i think i'm going to go for the goods produced not a huge boost though uh, actually speaking of which unfortunately the buildings have become expensive again but there are definitely a couple of workshops and things i want to build those will help improve the economy i mean they only take a while to set up if you're playing a tribal i mean that's true i feel in the right spot they could really cripple trade economies like this one? <laughs> this is probably one of the most dangerous places because the Europeans would struggle to strike against you and, and you're ideally located to basically halt all trade going from the east to the west. And I think I do need to spend a bit of power at this point. Uh, we can now just go by the amount of money we make, which Marina is by far the most valuable for that. Play as Venice, sell all your mainland, release your vassals and become a pirate. Or play as Cyprus. Or play as an uh, Irish nation. Um... I kind of want to take a look what the Irish national ideas are, because I'm pretty sure that some of those will have changed to be more piratey. Pell pirates in real. Although then you would have to deal with England. But then I think you would be a legitimate thorn in Britain's side, if you do that, and the Netherlands. Sicily would be a good island to be a pirate. Both Genoa and Venice trade nodes. This is true. And you can make a coastal pirate if you are in the Barbary Coast. If you're in North Africa, you don't have to be an island. Naxos would be the best pirate. They have 25% privateer tradition. Well, there you go. Good luck staying alive early on, though. Although, I guess if you're a pirate, then you can raid in much the same way as the knights can. Uh, the other thing we could have done, actually, is spend some of our Diplo on Seahawks. And then also the Privateer efficiency. 
finish off maritime ideas. That would also give me the unrest. Production research flawed. I'll take the prestige hit. Thank you. Hmm. Actually, how does maritime go with expansion? Even more naval force limit, because clearly that's what I need. Can sewers be built in this? Would that hurt the strategic value of this spot as a pirate? Yes, sewers can be built, and yes, that could potentially hurt trade. But if you take over Mara from where we are now, then you can hurt trade trying to get through Aiden. And with the Maldives and the Andamans, you can basically throttle trade before it even leaves. Although then you are spreading our fleet out more. Uh, one thing I did want to double check, and I've been kind of waiting until we have 100 ducats to do so, is I want to have another look at the flagship bonuses. So the previous one, the... Monthly chance of admiral skill gain costs half a ducat a month and didn't seem to do much. Okay, so it was mortars that were really expensive. The trade maps are actually super duper cheap. I could build a light ship with just the trade maps and that would probably pay for itself. It would also be a hell of a lot cheaper in terms of maintenance. I'm actually half tempted to do this. Still costs 100 ducats though. I'm spending 100 ducats for a light ship. I mean, if I'm doing that, I may as well do this, frankly. As far as aware, none of the Irish have naval ideas. Oh, they do. Connacht, I think, does. Munster, maybe. Some of them do. Kind of curious now because Ireland is a really good spot for pirating. Um, E4 Irish. I think that actually one of the Irish miners is considered the strongest in terms of naval. No, the way to really see that would have to be on the. Uh, loading page and I don't particularly want to tab out to do that. Right, I should be paying loans. And then there were four. Oh crikey, the last three loans are 100 ducats each. Yikes! And some of the cores are starting to come through. That is going to increase the amount of money we are generating. Which is great. So actually, the economic recovery here has been a hell of a lot faster than I kind of anticipated it would be. Uh, we could also start converting. Oh, we have Shia. And convert to Islam is still a thing that we could do. If we did that, then the Islamic nations up here would like us more. But I do like the cult system. The cult system's kind of interesting. I think I might save an Islamic nation for when I inevitably play in North Africa. More cores. What have you missed? Uh, the Great Recovery. That's about it. Um, when was the truce up again? 92. Long time. Okay, so we could fabricate on the Maldives at this point. And I would kind of like to grab them before anybody else does. They are allied to Poseidon, but I don't see that being a particularly huge problem. 